ICRT. Hello, welcome to ICRT Taiwan Plus, an interview series powered by Taiwan's only all English radio station and only all English streaming platform. I'm Joey, and today I'll be speaking with a friend, a coworker, and the deputy director of Taiwan Plus's new center, Andrew Ryan. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Joey? I'm very well. Thank you for making time on Friday night to hang out with me. For you always. <laughs> so ICRT is starting to collaborate with Taiwan Plus, and this is the start of a series of interviews. One may call it the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I think so. And if you know that reference, then you probably are amongst our age group. <laughs> <laughs> You're selling me out pretty quickly, there, Joey. <laughs> so this is the first time I actually get to sit down with you, Andrew, to talk about you. Usually, I'm watching you read the news. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So, where are the Ryans from? Let's start with that. Well, the Ryans are from Massachusetts originally. I was born in Western Massachusetts, okay. uh, but I kind of grew up all around. I grew up in Australia, in South Carolina, Chicago, St. Louis, Indiana. Yeah, pretty much. So you're a person of many cultural backgrounds. Yes, but the funny thing is, is that I've lived in Taiwan longer than anywhere else. In yeah. fact, longer than everywhere else added together. He's not going to like it, but we're going to ask him how many years he's been in Taiwan. Oh wow, that's going to really <laughs> age me. Uh, so I've been here for 25 years, okay. which means that I came here when I was five. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yes. No, it's interesting because I, when I first came to Taiwan, I had no idea I was going to be here yeah. 25 years. So I was planning to be here for a year. I came on a Fulbright scholarship, mm -hmm. just studying Chinese. And then the first year I was here, I met this guy and he's like, how long are you going to be in Taiwan? And I said, you know, probably about a year. Yeah. He's like, yeah, wait until you meet all the other people who'd said they'd only be here for a year. <laughs> and lo and behold, like one year turned into two, turned into 25. Wow, Andrew, you don't look a day over 25 in <laughs> Taiwan. <laughs> Thank you. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, like you said, a Fulbright Scholar. Uh, over the years, you've been awarded Golden Bell Awards, and you've committed decades to Taiwan. I'm sorry if that makes you sound seasoned, but <laughs> the plan wasn't always to stay in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. What was it that made you want to stay? Well, you know, a lot of people say this, mm -hmm. and it, it may sound like a cliche, but I say it with all earnestness. Like, just feeling comfortable here and the people of Taiwan, like my, my connections with people here, have just really made me feel like it's home. So I don't see this as being, you know, living in a foreign country. Like since day one, I felt like there was something special about this place that really connected with me. And, you know, the sort of a warmth that you get from being here, you feel like you can be part of Taiwan. Yeah. And, and for me, Taiwan really is my home. I'm going to have to recite that age old saying that the most beautiful scenery in Taiwan is the people. Yeah. Really, it's anywhere. The most beautiful scenery anywhere is the people. So it's the people that got you to stay. It's the environment that made you feel comfortable. Yeah. And now we're here at Taiwan Plus telling the stories of the people of Taiwan. How did you get recruited for this project? Well, you know, it's interesting. I was talking with somebody that worked for Taiwan Plus. Yeah. You know, started to introduce the goals of Taiwan Plus, which uh -huh. is, like you said, to tell the stories of Taiwan to the rest of the world. And I really felt like it's something that gelled with me because that's something that I've spent the last 25 years doing, sharing the interesting parts of Taiwan that, you know, the international media don't necessarily always talk about. You know, we're doing it on kind of a grand scale, yeah. to be honest. Oh, yeah. um, so for us, like building a team from the ground up here, in a country where there really is no large scale uh, telling of, of news in English. So to, to build a team that has not only the English ability, but also the news ability and the TV ability, it's, you know, in some ways we were starting from scratch. And though your title is deputy director, but we all know that in a town, the sheriff calls the shots, <laughs> but the deputy <laughs> bends over backwards to make things happen. So how hard was it to actually put this team together? What are some of the obstacles you ran into? Well, I think the hardest thing is, is at the very beginning, we didn't, we didn't actually know that we would be doing live television every day. So... From day one, we knew that we would be telling these stories via social media, via the internet. And then in a very short period of time, we kind of added on this big broadcast component as well. So really more than anything, it was, was going from having time to tell the stories, leisurely time to tell the stories, to all of a sudden finding yourself inside this massive, fast-paced, moving news environment where daily stories, you know, we need to cover those as well. And we have to get those stories in our show in a very short period of time. So for me, I think the hardest part about it was the speed. Yeah. 
having come from a radio background where you can actually spend a little bit more time thinking about what you want to do and you can craft those those pieces a little bit more carefully now it's sort of like finding finding the way to get it out as quickly as possible mm -hmm. and doing it with you know a, a fantastic team but a team that's also learning as well so i think for us it's been kind of pulling together all these different resources in a very short period of time today you know it's we're 3 months into this endeavor yeah uh, I've only been on this job for five months. So for me, it's like I feel like a, a new dad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, our newborn is, is three months old now. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, it, it, this baby is growing much faster than I ever imagined uh, and, and has wisdom beyond, you know, three months. Yeah. But uh, for anyone who's ever been a dad or a parent, we know that this is about the time when things start to get really rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... We've hit the terrible twos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you said speed, um, I see that you do something incredible in the newsroom. Is that within um, a split second, you have to decide what news should make it and what should be left on the cutting room floor. Yep. So uh, when those things happen to you, do you feel like you're doing a good job choosing the right news for Taiwan Plus? Or is, that, is there still some hesitancy sometimes? We're doing a fantastic job. <laughs> My boss is listening, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do think we are doing a, a very good job. We're doing a very careful job trying to make these decisions quickly. But fortunately, we have, like I said, we have a fantastic team. And it really is a balance between people who have been in the industry for decades uh, and have worked for many of the, the major international news outfits and, you know, the, the youth, the young, uh, local kind of uh, fresher uh, perspective. So it's these added together helps us make smart decisions very quickly. Uh, and, and I love that. I love, you know, we've been in the office together when, uh, you know, a breaking news story has appeared and we've, we've thought, can we get this story in this show? Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've been able to crank it out. Uh, sometimes we're running. I'll be very honest. There is some running in the newsroom. <laughs> But, you know, that's that's all part of, you know, doing the news and being committed to telling these stories and getting them to the people that want to watch them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think we've been doing a pretty good job. You guys have really rallied a very talented group of bilingual speakers, multicultural team mm -hmm. to join you. And of course, with the help of a lot of news media from around Taiwan, ICRT included. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the great stories you've told so far? Do you remember anything you want to share? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. We've done so many stories at this point. We've done probably more than a thousand different stories yeah. uh, in three months. Um, and the ones that really stick out in my mind are the ones where we've sent our reporters out to do reporting in the field. Mm -hmm. Because I think that when the reporter, him or herself, gets a firsthand perspective on what's happening, they can tell the story in a way that no one else can tell that story. Yeah. So, for example, you know, we sent a reporter to, to a Paiwan village in southern Taiwan to talk about double minorities. Mm -hmm. So these are Paiwan people who are also part of the LGBT community. Yeah. So they're experiencing something that you know, most people don't have the experience of. And the ability to share that from the ground, from that village, really helps tell the story in a way that resonates. But it's not just that. We've sent people to Taidong. We've sent people to Taichung, Kaohsiung. I went to Kaohsiung myself. Yeah, you sent yourself to Kaohsiung <laughs> yeah. for the new art center. That's right. That the new, up there. It's the new Kaohsiung Music um, Center okay. that opened up. About that story specifically, um, I heard just... 20 minutes ago that Andrew was the only correspondent that got sent That's down right. there. <laughs> so not only did you film your own news yep. on your cell phone, no, mobile machine. Yes. Yes. But also you did some B-roll takes with That's it. That's right. You have very steady hands, Andrew Ryan. You know, I try. I try. Yeah. Okay, so telling Taiwan stories and, of course, everything old and new about Taiwan, the history, the people. That's right. And we're trying to do it in a way that's really impartial. Yeah. You know, this is actually a media that belongs to the people of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So we're responsible not to a government, not to a party. We're really responsible to, to actually to you and me. We're taxpayers, right? Yeah. I just I feel really empowered by the sense of mission to tell a story that's fair, that's honest, mm -hmm. that uh, is just. Uh, that, that has editorial independence um, and that really gets these stories to the rest of the world. Yeah, and uh, you heard that 
here first. Um, a streaming platform for the people by the people. That's right. I hope that doesn't actually become a tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it, I think we're safe. <laughs> <laughs> so moving forward, if you like, find out more about Taiwan, please go to TaiwanPlus.com or you can download the app. You That's can also right. come to ICRT for some of these interview series. And today we had ICRT Taiwan Plus, our first in a series, interviewing Andrew Ryan, the deputy director of the news team here. Thank you so much, Andrew. What a pleasure. Thanks, Joey.